Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Mr. Charles Robinson. He's a Vietnam veteran, and he's going to talk about his career. As a matter of fact, he's from uh, uh, the North Chicago area here, and he spent time in uh, military, specifically Vietnam. And I like to say that you are looking at a miracle. Uh, Mr. Robinson spent um, uh, most of his time <coughs> in uh, Vietnam, and he's going to go talk about it. As a matter of fact, um, greetings, Mr. Robinson. Glad to be here, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. We're very happy that you've taken time from your busy schedule to be with us, as always. Uh, um, <coughs> I mentioned at the top of the program that you are a miracle. I'd like to start off, why you consider yourself a miracle? Well, Dr. Brooks, some people believe in luck. I, I, I just don't see luck in, in my life in any category. Okay. I, I, I put that on emphasis because of in Vietnam in 1967, 50 years ago, okay. we were in a firefight for about six hours all night long. Mm. So during that portion of the firefight, we got overran by the North Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. We actually fought hand-to-hand -hand combat, and at some points, they just over overran our ranks. Mm -hmm. So my platoon and myself were out on an ambush, so the captain called up and said that he had been wounded and that he wanted us to come back in. Mm. So. In the process of getting back to where the company was located, we didn't, we didn't receive any enemy fire. They had totally surrounded the captain and the company. Wow. So when we got back to the line, we just went across the road. And as we got across the roadway, they closed the ranks on us again. Mm. So in that process is when we start firing back and one of the North Vietnamese tossed a hand grenade down between my legs, but I didn't have an idea that it was there mm -hmm. until one of my friends kept yelling, Ravi, Ravi, grenade, grenade, and I'm telling him I don't have any more, but he wasn't asking for one. Mm -hmm. He was telling me that there was one down between my legs, but thanks to the good Lord, I, it didn't go off. Wow. So. Then that is a, that's a blessing from God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because I like to say that we all are blessing from God. True. Because he knew we would be here even before creation. True. You know, but those that uh, uh, don't believe in creation, believe in evolution, you know, uh, have another thought about it, you know. So that hand grenade incident, was just one of many, 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 many other episodes. Now, how long were you in Vietnam? Over a year. Okay, was that a was that a year's tour? Yeah, if you made it. If, if you made it, yeah, right. Because <laughs> I, I was in Korea and it was a 16 month tour. But I, I, I was, a, I admit, I was a replacement, so I was a peacetime event. Yeah, well, a lot of guys, they rather than they were draftees like myself. <laughs> They didn't want to come back to the States and, and get out of the military, so they just, a lot of them stayed an extra four or five months over there. Oh. But I didn't, I'm not going to, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to come home, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and I did. But, mm -hmm. you know, you, you see people, other guys that get blown up by hand grenades, I mean, they're right next to you. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Well, the guy asked me one day, well, what would you do if somebody get blown up? You just try to help them as best you can, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. But you, in the meantime, you're taking rounds on, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to get them to a chopper and protect yourself, too. So mm -hmm. that's your friend. That's your buddy. That's your comrade. So We're going to get back to that, but I want to, I mentioned that you're a local resident, and, and uh, we're going to talk about how we met and, as a matter of fact, uh, your daughter, that your daughter went to uh, Tyson Tyler's daycare center? Yeah. 
All my, all my kids went to your school. <laughs> all my kids <laughs> went to your school. It was a great school for my kids, you know. Okay. But I, I think I met you back in 1972, 73. Okay. And you were just starting out, I do believe. Yeah, your school opened. Actually, April 1st, uh, 74. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. and all my kids went through there. Okay. But they, they enjoyed it, and it, it taught them the beginning of school life. But mm -hmm. uh, you went through some times when things were bad, but you, you still hung in there, you mm -hmm. and Miss Daisy. We had a, uh, you may call it a Vietnam experience right there yeah. at Tuss and Tyler's. Uh, one year after we opened, uh, then uh, the, uh, uh, someone uh, broke in at midnight, sprinkled gasoline all over the carpet, up and down, yeah. and, and tried to, um, you know, exterminate the building. I remember, I came there, brought my kids there that morning, and you said there's no school there. That's what happened. Someone had poured some accelerant uh -huh. around, like you said, in the middle of the place and tried to set fire to it, but it was a fireproof rug, I think it was. Right, the rug, exactly. The rug it had to, legally, it had to be yeah, fireproof. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, you, yeah, you, right. That's a miracle for you, too, because that would have burned your whole establishment down. Exactly. But yeah. tell us about why we're on it. Uh, was it Bridget? Was that Bridget. The, tell, us, tell us about it. What is she doing now? Bridget is a, a finance operator for some large company. And uh, Jack, she works in the daycare center mode. Also, my my young daughter, Ola Charles, she mm -hmm. went to, to Tyson Tyler. She went with the basketball player. They were in the same class. Uh, oh, Sean Marion? Sean Marion. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a class picture when they were small kids, and uh, she said he used to pinch her all the time. <laughs> I asked him about that. He said he didn't remember. <laughs> he came by the barbershop one day playing basketball. So. Yeah, Sean Marion started in uh, diapers yeah. at Daisy Day Nursery yeah. when he was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. So that's how we. Uh, um, but tell us about uh, uh, North Chicago then and North Chicago now. Well, 50, say 49 years ago, let's see, 1968, mm -hmm. it was a boom town. Jobs everywhere. At the wire mill, you had Johnson Motors, you had Abbott, you had uh, Goodyear Tire on 41. <sighs> now okay. everything's gone. What happened? That's what I asked. Everything moved away. I, I, I know uh, um, technology played a great part. True. And also, as far as Wisconsin, they offered, uh, um, you know, more lucrative uh, tax breaks. Tax breaks, yeah. Yeah. And still doing it, yeah. as a matter of fact. You know, you got Jelly Belly. There and in, they, uh, they got a new company moving in from Germany. I think bought some property up there. They're going to mm -hmm. put in a candy plant too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, we we talked uh, when I first came over 50 years ago. There were we still had farm farms. I didn't know was we were in uh, Mississippi or <laughs> North, Chicago. <laughs> North Chicago, right? Right. But but you can tell us about uh, you have a. Summer, summer vacation and a winter vacation, we can't call it. I said say summer home and a, and a winter home. Well, we? you know, I, <laughs> most people that work all their lives, they say the first thing I'm going to do is retire and I'm not going to work anymore okay. and I'm going to move out of the cold climate. Okay. Well, most people don't do that. Mm -hmm. Most people go back and get a part-time job. It doesn't take much for me. Okay. I'm a single person, mm -hmm. but if you look at things the way they are, most people have to go back to work because everything is expensive. Okay. Taxes, okay. gas, everything's going up, no budget in what, two and a half, almost three years. Mm -hmm. So people are going to find jobs other places and they won't come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So another population moves in and another one moves on and, and then the plants move in and move out and there's nothing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But that's the way it is. Yeah, and the nature of the jobs, too, are different. Like uh, the uh, technology is taken right. over, too, right? Right. The technology jobs. and kids, most kids, uh, you, everybody wants to be a, a computer analyst. <laughs> okay. What about the heavy equipment operator? Mm -hmm. 
What about the cement finisher? What about the uh, carpenters? These people make good money too. Mm -hmm. But then again, you got to go to school to take up a trade. Mm -hmm. right. So with the way the system is today, it's hard to, they keep cutting this, they keep cutting that. And then a lot of kids say, well, this is what I wanted to do. And however, I can't find anything to do. So they go to other means, they go to crime. So when um, anyone, before they consider moving into an area, uh, they look at the city administration, uh, the schools, and also park district too. True. Uh, before they move in, but what about this area here? Uh, it, it, administration doesn't s seem to be too lucrative there, but in the schools, we have half the schools that that we had when you know we were when you were when you. Right. Children were attending school. My thing has always been if you want kids to go to school, you got to have schools open. But why would you close the schools down and then says, we got to build a new school over here? And, and, the, and the kids, uh, they, they, they separate the children. Okay. Kids love to play and be together. Mm -hmm. It's the adults create the problems. It's not the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to find this and that. But you got to go to school. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. If you don't go to school, you're going to be put on the back burner, and that's what most of your life you will be. Mm -hmm. If you don't go to, well, I'm not learning anything in school. But you are. Mm -hmm. You're learning to get along with people. Every day you go to school, you get along with someone. One of the great advantages we have here in this area, um, back in the 60s and 70s that you mentioned, was Great Lakes uh, Naval Base. In other words, uh, the students didn't have to go overseas. The, the the families of the Navy, when they send their kids to North Chicago, then they will teach them about, uh, share with them mm -hmm. about other countries and, and, and so forth. So that's a great learning experience. But now, with the closing of uh, activities there at Great Lakes, mm -hmm. you know, moving elsewhere, you know, the training center, is, so for example, actually, the Naval Training Center, I guess, is the only training center in the world there now. Well, I, the one that the, I think the only one that they do basic training. Your basic training, yeah. Yeah, you know, where they're co ed, now the girls and the boys come here and get their. their they had a choice training. of uh, San Diego um, uh, in Florida, the Fort. I forgot what city. I, I forgot too, but I know what Lord you're talking about. Down, in, a tra in, a, in, tra in Great Lakes. Great Lakes was chosen, and I, I guess it was a political deal, right? Because we're saying, well, we know we're not going to get the train center because of the, the winners, you know, and so forth. But it was chosen because of politics. Politics played a role you know, again. So but that's that, a good thing, maybe. A good thing know. for this area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have uh, this only training center in the world, in this country, and uh, men and women go through this training center. Right. You know, That's it's the right. basics. Right. Yeah. And it's why we mentioned that it's also historical uh, because we have the Golden 13 mm -hmm. out there, the first um, officers, first African-American officers uh, uh, in the Navy uh, were, they have a, a, the, the Golden 13, the, the the train center is named after them. The, 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 after the, after them, the Golden Thirteen. I guess what, what, the, what they call it. I guess the Golden Thirteen. But they're processed through that. Um, the, the, so the history history tells us that the sixteen officers trained. Uh, we took the test, mm -hmm. and they couldn't. They made the highest scores in the Navy. Right, and they didn't believe. They it. didn't believe it. They retested them. And they made higher <laughs> scores. <laughs> and of course, you got Dory Miller, the, the first, first African American to uh, uh, get killed in the uh, Pearl Harbor. He shot down several Japanese planes. Mm -hmm. And they have barracks named after him on a base. And I don't know how many, how many people know that the barracks, who Dory Miller was, you know, this type of thing, you know. But let's go back and uh, we say you are a Vietnam veteran, mm -hmm. and we have a disease. Now I guess they call it. What did they call it? They call it Post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. What did, what did they call it? That it's not a disease. PTSD. PTSD is called. It's not a disease, right? It's a. It's a, what, what do you call it? Well, 
You can call it a disease. I know you, a lot of soldiers got it. So Yeah, you receive care. Now, tell us about the veterans care uh, after military service that you've been getting for, because the, the government didn't recognize it, PTSD, no. in the beginning, right? They didn't the, recognize the it. The government doesn't re recognize too many things. <laughs> for example, when I got drafted, they sent a letter to the House. Okay, right. Informing me that your friends and neighbors have selected you to represent them in the United States Army, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, out of all the things I went to in the military and being in Vietnam, I never got a letter saying, here's a letter of your benefits. No. Never. And I don't think any veteran in this country ever got one. That should be automatic, right? Like when you initially you got a letter, it's automatic that you... In when Congratulations, you, out, you know. You're on your you own, out. Johnny. They, no. don't, they don't send letters home to say, well, you know, we, you've served your time, you served your country, and now it's time for you to come to the VA so we can serve you. I never got a letter like that. Mm. Never. And that kind of teed me off behind this because when I was in Vietnam, I had malaria for over two months. Okay. You, you, you take a lot of quinine in your system for that uh, for malaria. Okay. So when you when you get out, normally I was thinking when I got out of the hospital, I says, well, I can go home now. Okay. But it didn't happen. They sent me right back to the jungle. Mm. And I'm saying, if I get bit again, I'm, I'm going to have a relapse. I'm going back in the hospital. I might even die. Mm -hmm. I did. I got out of the hospital around the 15th of May, uh, the middle last of May. And I didn't go home until October 24th. Wow. So I stayed out in the jungle. I don't know what happened. Another miracle. Maybe the mosquitoes didn't bite me enough again, you know, but that's what happened. They do not, and when you go for your benefits, a lot of people at these veterans' hospitals give you the runaround. You're the veteran. Okay. You're supposed to look out for me. Okay. So, when you say something to a person, they'll say, well, you know, uh, uh, you just have to wait like the other veterans. But that's why a lot of veterans don't want to go to the VA. Mm. They want to treat you like a hero in the beginning, and then they treat you like you're a second, third class citizen. And you're the server of this country. But nobody would tell you these are your benefits. They don't, you don't see that being advertised on television like they do booze, <laughs> cigarettes, or any other items. Mm -hmm. No one says, contact your local VA. They have news for you. Nobody. My first employment <coughs> with Downey yeah. VA Hospital Downey is uh, Captain uh, James a. James a. Lovell. Lovell Federal Healthcare Center. Now, right. You know, uh, when they combine the two hospitals of the Great Lakes and also uh, uh, Downey, uh, uh, the VA into one hospital uh, pushed by um, that Senator, Congressman Kirk, I guess yeah, at that time. Yeah, Mark Kirk. Mark Kirk. But that was my, my first, and I was an educational therapist, of course, and, and uh, they used to tell me that you have to have patience to be here. You know, you can't <laughs> work both ways. Ed. Well, you have to have patience yeah, to be here. You know? <laughs> so, you have to be, so, but actually they didn't have any patience with you and you, the beneficiary right. of the treatment, right? Right. What they do, they make you go through all these problems. You got to do this paperwork. You got to do, you've already diagnosed the man as having severe and chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. What else do I have to do? I've already been diagnosed. Okay. So every time they keep sending you papers and papers and papers, that's why you got computers, I thought. Okay, okay. So, but they never tell you, it, well, we'll have to see you in six weeks, come back in six weeks. Mm-hmm. Or you'll see a doctor once and she'll tell you, I, I won't see you again, I'm transferring or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you get a different doctor 90% of the time, but I've been fortunate for all the years I've been going, I have the same uh, psychologist I've had for 22 years. Dr. John Baer. Right, Dr. Baer. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great person, too. But, you, you, you know, yeah. like I said in the beginning, they don't tell you these things. You know, a lot of guys on alcohol, they're on drugs. 
A lot of them won't help. Nobody wants to help. Mm. They'll tell you, well, we can do this for you or we'll do that. They're too busy doing other things. So now you combine civilians and military. To me personally, it's not working. And I've heard a lot of other people tell me that it's and not working. And that was working. supposed to improve by having the military and the VA together. Right. But uh, according to uh, the report, we're going to lose the VA. It was going to be combined with other VAs if we didn't get the Navy to consolidate with us. Again, you, like you said, politics. Okay. Where are they going to put it? They turned on the hospital on the Navy base side. Okay. And they spent $90 million or more to put this hospital over there by the VA. So OSHA told them when they inspected <clears throat> that the building was unsafe and unhealthy. I can quote that from the New Sun. I got the paper. Is that right? Yeah. And the Navy said, we're going to open it anyway. And that's what they did. And, I, and, and to your viewing audience, I didn't make this up. I got a newspaper clipping at home that would tell the same thing. So, you know, it's just what they wanted to do. After how many million dollars they spent? They spent about 90. 90 million dollars. For that addition. For an unsafe yeah. location. This is what OSHA said. I, I'm not making this up. OSHA said the place was unsafe and unhealthy. Mm. And they built it anyway. And it's built like a ship on the inside. There's no windows in the middle of a ship. Okay. There's no one that's in that new building. They're all on the outside. You can walk in those old buildings and stand in the hallway and look out every window that's had a, has a door, but not in the new addition. Hmm. And I can stand in my doctor's office and touch both walls. It's built like a ship for space on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no windows in the middle of a ship. But tell me this, though. <clears throat> in the military, you had combat stress right but now the your civilian you got civilian stress right so you you got stress all it's a job <laughs> it's going to any hospital especially if you go to the VA as often as I do because of the th the problems I have uh, it's a job it's stressful and then they make your appointments you supposed to have it in the afternoon they make it in the morning you sure in the afternoon then they they says well you were supposed to be I said well this is what the card says I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be at 2 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's scrambling. So, you know, I mean, I get great benefits. Sometimes I get great service. I'm, you're not going to get 100% service all the time mm -hmm. because people are human. But uh, when you're dealing with veterans, you have to do, go in there and be compassionate enough because, hey, I went through a lot. I can't speak for anyone else except the people that was there with me. They went through everything I went through. And believe you me, Doc, I went through it all. Okay. So, you know, if, if you if you got a veteran that's a brother or cousin or relative, yeah, don't don't look down on the person. Don't look. He's seen some very very bad things, and trust me, some very very bad things happened to him. In war, the new war they got going, they go out and work eight hours. They come home, sleep in a bunk. I slept on the ground. Everybody slept on the ground. What no? Holiday Inn around the corner, well, so my, to speak. I was, I was upgraded. <coughs> we had a tent. <laughs> we slept in tents in Korea. <laughs> we, we, eight, eight, eight of us in a tent. <laughs> we slept on the ground in your clothing. Okay. People had this mythical thought about being in the military that you, you, you got candle lights every night, you got wine and all this. You're not of a can okay. like when I was in there. And, and that's it. You had to come to ration, see, see, in the see, can. see, see it, rations, in I the guess. Can. I and some of those packs had on those sea rations, 19, this was 66 when I was over there, seven. Mm -hmm. They had some of those boxes we would open up that said, stamped 1954. Oh, my goodness. So the food never spoiled mm -hmm. because it's sealed very tightly. But now they got the MRIs, so you put a little water. But then where you going to get the water from? Okay. They got water and everything. We didn't have water. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you have to live off the land, so to speak. This is, um, you, you know, and tell us about, we, we use the term PTSD, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about uh, 
I, I mentioned, uh, give this opportunity to file a listening audience to hear because I know families that disown their, their own uh, yes. veteran. Yes. And, and I was wondering, this must be a serious uh, problem. It is, problem. it is, it Ooh. is, Dr. Brooks. For, for them to do, and, and they say they invite the veteran to come to home and they just, uh, I guess they still think they're in Vietnam. I well, guess. Uh, the, what the doctors and numerous doctors have told me over the years that mm -hmm. severe and chronic PTSD, you've, you've involved yourself, not deliberately, Mm -hmm. But you involve yourself in things that were very, very bad. Okay. You know, you don't have to be a, a combat veteran to have PTSD. You could be growing up and see some bad things when you were a child. Uh, okay. Rape, uh, <clears throat> murders, and things of this nature. But a soldier, from my perspective, soldiers have PTSD because they were in a lot of bad things. Okay. You know, you, you, you never track caught. You never kept up with the time cycle. In other words, I couldn't tell you Thursday from Sunday mm -hmm. because okay. you lose the days as yeah. you yeah. rotate. So, yeah. But you always remembered, I got 358 days left on the wake up. Every day you would go down. You would go down. Mm -hmm. and, and what really would turn your corners on you, so to speak, would be when you get down to double digits, now you get really nervous especially if you're in the bush. If you back supply or cook or something, that made a big difference. Mm -hmm. But if you're out there in the bush every day and, 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 and you keep counting your days, you count your days, and now you're down to two digits and you're counting your days, then somebody get killed or wounded, then you count your days, you count, now you're down to nine days in a wake up and you're really scared. You really, I, I was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't scared out there being shot at every day. Okay. But the time coming down for me to get ready to go home, those are critical times because I've seen a lot of guys get killed right before they go home. Oh. And, that's, and that's, that's bad. Or you might see them going out on the ambush and one guy get killed at night. Then you have to go down to grave registration and identify the body. That's, and then you're on your way home too. And then you cry, they cry, they don't want you, they want you to go home but you want to stay there and look out for them because it's, it, that's your squad. Okay. And, and over a year's time, you become very, very close with a lot of people. I've got guys I wish that I could see them today. I'm hoping, I pray every day that they're still alive. And I'm hoping if they're still alive, they think about me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope they do. Mm -hmm. But that PTSD, it was just everything that happened to me in Vietnam, I could see it all over again every day. Wow. The nightmares at night. Not violent, but tossing and turning, you know, trying to get away from whatever's trying to catch up with you. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, that's part of the PTSD. And you stuck with it. I, I, know, I, I know President Obama, past former President Obama, uh, would, would always say coming to the end of his term is that he didn't want to get involved in another war. Right. And I guess was he blessed or fortunate that he didn't have to, he didn't have to, declare war. Well, well he, all the he wars. definitely did want to do it. Right, he? right. I can understand that point. But all the wars is going on already. You know, ISIS and all these yep, other people, yep. you know, they blow up this to kill people. They don't care. They don't care about babies. Yeah. They don't care about nothing. They kill themselves. Yeah. I think it's an honor to do it. But if, if I've got the PTSD that I've got from being in the war and combat, think of all those people that are getting killed every day, then their families are left. They'll have it, those kids like this will have PTSD the rest of their lives. And it's sad. Well, you know, in addition to PTSD, uh, I think the president was uh, thinking about the limbs that would be lost. Yeah. Arms, legs, eyesight, and all the other Not a lot of them too, Dr. Bear. I mean, Dr. <laughs> Bear is on my mind. Okay. Uh, Dr. Brooks, speaking of uh, the limbs, this, this kid lost both his legs right here. Okay. I picked him up running, trying to put him on a chopper, but they're trying to shoot the chopper down and kill me too. So mm -hmm. we followed him, picked him up, put him back on. Now, that's enough to drive you wacky for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. How many people do you see dead in your lifetime? 
How many funerals do you go to? Not that many. You can count them up on, yes, you know, yes, yes. because of the fact thousands of people don't go to funerals or one funeral unless it's a, a great person or whatever. Mm -hmm. But with with uh, with Vietnam, you see people dead and mangled, disfigured all the time. Okay. So you have to compress this in your brain cycle to say, I put this back there, and I'll th I won't cry while I'm here. When I get home, I'll cry. And that's what happens. That's what drive guys to drinking, drugs. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they have no thought factor. You know, the government says, well, we'll put you in rehab. But you can't change what I still think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. So somebody asked my, some of your viewers might call and say, well, you don't know what he's talking about. Well, I can live with that too. Mm -hmm. But I was there. Okay. They don't, Nobody stay and go there in my spot. I took my own place and I went there, and it wasn't a good thing to be here. Trust me. Well, I had an uncle that uh, <coughs> uh, was in a foxhole with a best friend got killed right beside him. Same foxhole, yeah. right? He was blessed, and when he got out, he went back to Mississippi, got his clothes together, and went to Ohio. And never spent was. another day back in Mississippi, oh. going through the the same thing that he left. Yeah, and been to four years in the war and come back, but it's he just couldn't couldn't handle it. Sure, the, uh, wars know? change veterans. Wars don't change other people. Okay, people. Some people came back from Vietnam. They got sped on. They got cursed. They got called child killers and stuff like that. I was in an airport in Memphis on the 24th of October, 1967, and a guy walked up to me, a hippie guy. He said, mm -hmm. where are you coming from, Sergeant? I said, I'm coming from South Vietnam. And he stuck his hand out. He says, welcome home. Okay. Because I thought I was in a position to say, now, if he's ready to do something to me, I'm going to just jump <laughs> on him in the first. I'm not going to give you a chance because I've heard about things that had happened in California. Yeah when the guys came home and the people mobbed them and stuff like amazing, that. Amazing, amazing. But this is my country, no matter what. So mm -hmm. I did what I had to do. So now it's time for the VA to take care of the veterans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what Abraham Lincoln said about veterans? You have to take care of your veterans. Mm -hmm. How you take care of your veterans shows you what type of nation you are. Okay. You know, a lot of guys that get turned away from the VA, a lot of them got less than honorable discharges, but there's a way to work around everything. A lot of people wouldn't adjust for military. You, a lot of people said, I, I'm not going in the military. They went, I knew a guy went AWOL for 18 years. Okay. And finally turned himself into the police. And right there in Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we just admit that when you are drafted or volunteer to go in the military, I hate to say this, but you don't go in there to come back. No. Uh, You're I, going to war right. to defend this country. Right. And, and, to, and for the people, civilians have to realize that you're there so they can be free here. Right, but a lot of people don't see it like that. They have no respect for none of that. They don't care if you went to Timbuktu and fought for 30 years and come back. A lot of people just don't have no, no reasoning about nothing, mm. especially veterans. Sure, I get a lot of good things, accolades from people on the street. They shake yeah. my hand and say, thank you for serving our country and stuff like that. I appreciate that. All veterans appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But most people won't do that. For some reason, they, won't sell, they look at your cap or look at the guy in a wheelchair and say, oh, what happened to him? You know what I mean? It wasn't a drive-by, the guy got wounded. Right. You know, so they, they holler about drive-by shooting. I said, drive-bys don't compare to war. Right. War, they shoot at you all day, all night, five, six, seven, eight, nine hours. They shot at the Marines for eight weeks up on Quezon. Eight weeks, mm -hmm. every day, all day. Big rounds. Okay. Killing people, our people. So, I'm a mm -hmm. veteran's veteran. Okay. <laughs> but, but tell our, our audience this. <clears throat> How do you overcome, I say you, but any veteran, overcome PTSD uh, via treatment? For me, for 22 years? Is, is it some 
medical, uh, uh, you know, that you nah. take, uh, uh, nah. how is it treated? It's, it's. Now you say, I think you said about 22 years you've been, at least 22 years you've been. Going to the VA. Going to treat, been treated. treatment. I mean, I still have nightmares, but I don't drink. I don't go to bars. I don't okay. do those things. But see, PTSD drives you to do those things. You can't sleep at night unless you've been drinking. I couldn't. So I go out and have a few drinks, and I come in and go to sleep and over, go to bed and oversleep. Okay. But uh, I found out with PTSD over the past 20 something, oh well, I've been at it for 50 years. So I've just been getting treatment for 26, 26 years. 26, okay. And uh, it do, it's fine for me, but mm. I still have nightmares. You never get over the nightmares. I try to think of something else when I go to sleep at night. Basically, I don't ever go to bed till two o'clock. I can't mm. sleep. If I go to bed at nine, I'm gonna wake up at one. Okay. And then I can't go back to sleep. So I go to bed around 1.30, quarter to two, five o'clock and wide awake. It takes me about an hour to fall asleep. Yeah. So I really don't get that much sleep. Then they said, well, you should, but that's you telling me I should. <laughs> right, right. But you don't, you never walked in these boots, you know, so. <laughs> I well. have to really salute you. Thank you. Give you credit for even want to relive your experience with our listening audience. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you know, that. There's other Vietnam veterans are just wouldn't yeah, would like to do it but just can't. Right. right. I agree. I know yeah. a lot of them like that. Okay. Okay. You know, and it's an honor to be here and to be with you, Dr. Brooks. I appreciate yes, sir. you. Great, great. No, knowing you before you went in and especially yeah. have now been in myself I was in and I was a in peace time. Mm -hmm. I was a replacement, you know. And even replacement, uh, I saw a sergeant, he was going was was ready to leave the next day and and we heard in a rice pad a boom blown up in a rice pad. Yeah. Remember you know, I told you earlier? Ne never forget that. The scariest part is when you get down to those single digits, when you get down to nine days, mm -hmm. you get really nervous. Mm -hmm. You get really nervous because you're afraid you might fall out of the bed, you might hurt <laughs> yourself, uh, you're cleaning your weapon, somebody else cleaning the weapon, the gun could go off. And, 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 and people, but to the gun thing, people <clears throat> today are saying that the guns is what killing people, it's not the gun, it's the person. Okay. It's the person. <clears throat> right. You know, you can put a gun right here on that table for two years. It won't move until the person okay. picks it up. Okay. So you have to be trained in weapons. So they, in the military, do a good job mm. for and after. Okay. You know, so. Right, but, right, right, right. But yeah, PTSD is something that I wouldn't wish on anyone. So it's not a medical treatment that you take. It's uh, but and you go weekly, is that right? You yeah. go weekly. I could go every day. For. Let me get it right, for 26 years? Yeah. You've been? Dr. Bear confirmed that, my records are confirmed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm glad to have him in my life and I'm glad he, I'm glad, I know he's glad to have me in his life. Mm -hmm. But they teach you different things, how to get along with your significant other and uh, your children and things of this nature. Whereas if you're drunk, you can't, you can't accomplish anything. And I was a workable drunk, as I should mm -hmm. say. Yeah. I have to admire uh, <coughs> Dr. Bear. <coughs> I sponsored him into the North Chicago Rotary Club. Yeah, he did a TV show with us years ago. Right, and that that was fan. He's 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 willing at any time to yeah. uh, do it again. So maybe I will, since you mentioned him, yeah. try to get together an another show. I, I know he'd be excited about it. I am because right. he's yeah. a fine person. You're right, right. That's right. For uh, again. That's weekly for about an hour? About 45 minutes. 45 minute session. And you get a, you I greatly, get, I get greatly a joke. benefit. I get a joke from that. But it keeps me on the path from what I didn't, what I used to do. I don't go back and do that. You're getting older every day. Mm -hmm. Your body's falling apart. All that water you drink with the iodine in it, it's gonna come back to haunt you sooner or later. Okay. We all know this. Mm -hmm. We're all veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't get killed by a bullet, something else will kill you years later. Okay. So that's why I encourage a lot of veterans, not at this VA, if you don't want, go to any VA. 
mm -hmm. and get yourself checked out. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they're there for you and it don't cost you anything. You already paid. You paid in full when you raised your right hand and took that one foot forward. Okay. You paid in full. But they won't call you at home and tell you. Mm -hmm. okay. You got to do your own footwork. That's amazing, you know. Yeah. Something has maybe someone uh, memory memory will be jogged and they will do something about this to try to get this changed. I hope so, but you know, time keeps creeping along, creeping along, and you got a lot of veterans who will not go to the VA under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. Is that the government lied to them too many times? And that's sad. You see veterans out standing on the street. Why? They're not out there because they want to be out there. Somebody said we can't let them in. Let the man in. So he got a dishonorable discharge. He's still a veteran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give him something. Mm -hmm. Maybe he couldn't adjust to military life. It was hard for me. I didn't want to be in the Army. I had a great job. I didn't, in 1966, I did not want to go in the military. I was making $400 a week in St. Louis okay. in 1966. That's a lot of money. Okay. Gas is 15 cents a gallon. Right. right. So, but yeah, don't look down on the veterans. Every day, approximately 22 veterans suicide occur. Yeah. And we want to know, people want to know why. They give up. They feel like everything's stacked against them, I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the wall is steady pushing and pushing, and the next thing you know, they push you out of the picture. Mm -hmm. So you sleep under the rail tracks and things like that, but you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. And if it's just because you got a general discharge or other than the honorable, you're still a veteran. Yeah, yeah. Do something for the man. It's cold winters here. You're not living in Florida where it's hot. <laughs> you know, these guys deserve better treatment than what they get for me. Mm. I don't look, I don't feel, I wouldn't wish what I went through in Vietnam, Dr. Brooks, on my worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Because I went through hell. I've seen the other side, and I tell people that quite often, is that when the veterans tell you they don't have to lie about nothing they say. Well, a lot of people say, well, he's lying. Why would he lie? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been living 50 years after the war, right, you know? Yeah. I don't have a reason to lie about anything. I'm, a, I'm very comfortable with me. Mm. Yeah. Psychiatric drugs prescribed um, for residual effects of combat stress, such as PTSD and it, so it, forth. It doesn't right. help. Don't, don't do it. Medication, my thing on the medication, medication didn't get you there. Mm -hmm. Okay. The things you saw every day, women bed, dead with their babies in their arms, I've seen that. Running from our napalm, I saw a lot of that. It's up here. Yeah. The medicine, what is the, uh, taking a pill going to do for your thought factor? And I think all the time, most people should. But I don't see anything that they could give me that said, <clears throat> it's stop PTSD overnight. There's no magic wand. Nothing. That you, you can just, wave. You got to keep going for training and stay on that course. Now, if you step off on the right or the left, you, you got time to get back on that track. Mm -hmm. But if you let yourself go, you go back to what you were doing. Stinking thinking. Mm. And it's not good for you, your body, your family. A lot of war has broken up a lot of marriages. That's what the next uh, statement I was going to make a question the importance of family support. Right. Now, I got great sisters. Okay. I got four of them here in this area. Mm. They don't, when I go by their house, they have a party. They know that I do not eat out of a paper plate. Reason being, helicopter come in, blew my food out of my hand. Okay. I said, if I ever get back to the real world, I would only eat out of China and silverware. <laughs> if it's all possible. So when they have parties, they don't say nothing. I go to the, get the plate out of there because I just, you can't hold nothing in a paper plate. And that's one thing that screwed me around in Vietnam. You know, you're trying to eat out of a paper plate. <laughs> they cheap flimsy paper plates, you know what I mean? Make a great commercial, you know? But mm -hmm. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I don't do. 
So are there classes for families too with mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Brand? Yes. Yes, they give families for the spouses, oh. you know, and, the, and anybody else that would like to come. Mm -hmm. Because people think it's only the military people that have post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, exactly. It's not. You could have it. All these people in the studio could have it. Mm -hmm. But they'll never know they got it because they'll be in denial. Mm -hmm. Like they'll say, are you an alcoholic? No. Okay. How many drinks do you have a day? One or two? Well, you're an alcoholic. If, the only way not to be an alcoholic is never drink. Now you're a recovering alcoholic. So that's, okay. <laughs> that's the way they got it set up. So, you know, I tell people, don't look at me as a person that harmed people in war. War is war. And don't look down on that any veterans. Yeah. yeah. Because we gave our all. Some gave everything, you know, so. My next move is to go to the, to the wall in Washington. I've never been there oh. because I know what's going to happen. I got a good friend on there. And it just tells me up to think about it. Yeah. So, you know, but PTSD, ladies and gentlemen, is not a joke. <laughs> Trust me. So what will you call these uh, invisible scars <sighs> that, you, uh, well, that a person has? You, 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 you got memories. Mm-hmm. And most people I've found out and known that drank or used, they wanted to try to get rid of that memory. You can't. Yeah. It's embedded in there. You could work around it, but don't disturb it. So when you drink, you start feeling sorry for yourself and everybody else. Mm -hmm. So those are the invisible scars, the things you keep inside you. A lot of people won't talk about the war, and it took me almost 30 years to talk about it. But that was my, one of my problems. You didn't ever talk. Who are you going to talk to? You can't talk to your wife. She don't know what you're talking about. Right. So you got to find another vet or go to the VA. And that's what I did. I went to the VA. And they says, you got serious problems. I said, what's the problem? I thought I was doing fine. She said, psychiatrist said, you got post-traumatic stress disorder. And I didn't even know what to let. And I read all the time. I've read over it, but it didn't fit me. <laughs> right. I got a job every day. I go to work. Right. Said make no difference. And then I really broke down. And I went in the VA. I stayed 35 days the first trip. And they said, well, Mr. Robinson, we need to work on you a little further. I said, and do what? Right. She said, we're not going to hurt you. We just want to try to ease some of them demons you got, you know. And I stayed in another 35 days. And people get this misconception because you go in a hospital that you got them, that you that you're crazy. Okay. If that's the case, everybody walk around every day is crazy. Right. Just a degree. Yeah, right. So you know mm -hmm. you 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 feel bad and sorry for bad things you've seen, and you couldn't help it. So now it's time to get some help, but a lot of people don't want to help you because they say you're crazy. So they they were doing for years, was giving guys uh, pills yeah. for PTSD. Okay. That, that, that had nothing to do with my mind. <laughs> I'm going to still think what I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I've seen people who weren't. I've seen police officers that had it. They've been in bad shootings and okay. seen a lot of killings and stuff. So, but, you know, the, the guy next door could be a vet, you know. But we, we do get startled. You don't walk up behind me okay. and things like okay. that because okay. you know, we're always on guard. So what the best thing to do is just tap me on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what my girlfriend do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, what about retirement location? You can only retire where your money take you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> well, I, I, I look at retirement, uh, Dr. Brooks is uh, a place to go where you don't have to be bothered with the cold, the 25 below as we've seen it here in the years, 27 below. I okay. just want a warm climate, no shoveling of snow, no ice. That's it for me. Now, a lot of people like cold weather. I hear people say they love the seasons. I don't. It could be 85 degrees every day and I wouldn't complain. Okay. But 30 below, <laughs> you've seen it. Right. <laughs> no, I can't. But, you know, people go to Florida, Arizona. Uh, I'm not an Arizona person. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I always try to stay, go places where you don't get that cold. Florida, Mississippi, below the southern mm -hmm. part. But most people, they want to go to Arizona. A lot of people won't even leave here. They say, well, the grandkids are grown, so I got to find me a place, but they never leave. Well, things in the South has uh, changed to a uh, degree that you like to see them? Well, the atmosphere and the. Atmosphere is great. <laughs> but it's it's the same thing we talked earlier about all the jobs that left here. They went south. Okay. They got the Toyota plant inside of Tupelo, Mississippi. They got outside of Canton, Mississippi, Jackson. They got a, a Nissan plant. Okay. Uh, Yokohama Tire just built a $4 billion tire plant mm. in West Point, Mississippi. Now, West Point is 30 miles from Tupelo. That's where they build it. Toyota plant, so you got you got you don't have to go but the thirty miles to put tires on the cars. Okay, you know, so the factories that a lot of jobs in the South. People don't want to go to the South. Well, this and that, that. They got the same thing down that they got here. Okay, and 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 LeBron James found it out uh, in Los Angeles, yes. California, just recently. Right, and he is a uh, I don't know twenty million dollar home. House, I guess yeah. he just uh, twenty million dollar plus. Plus, you're you got a <laughs> negative sign on your driveway, though. Right, right. You're on your fence, so you know it's so sad, but that's just the way it is. In that, I guess we uh, continue to have. My job is I have forums periodically, you know, and and I try to. Uh, oh boy, uh, keep it before the people. They know that we all God's children and. And God loves, he has a special place for us before even creation. It's hard for right. us to realize that, right. but, uh, but uh, God loves us. And, and um, if, he, uh, if he loved all the wealthiest people in the world, then, you know, then what would it be for us uh, people that uh, It would be worse than what it is now. It's, good. it's already bad. I mean, I, I say this <clears throat> religiously because I've been to the other side of the world. Okay. There's no place I've ever been, Dr. Brooks, that can compete with the United States of America. Okay. This is it. Okay. Everybody wants to come here. Okay, right. Yeah, this is it. And so we have to deal with it. Right. They will put the world. United States down. I know. If mm -hmm. it's all the United States will do this and do that, I said, think about it. Just think about it. There's, uh, just like you say, just go to other, other countries. Go to other countries. You, you, so you find out quick. Well, tell us about um, uh, Malcolm Williams. In other words, I just found out recently that Malcolm Williams is your nephew. Yes, sir. And uh, he's the one, he attended Tyson Tyler's daycare center. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's uh, came back to see the wife recently. He and, he? he and his father. Oh, came, okay. Came in a family room to, they still love her, never forgotten her. Yeah, Malcolm Williams, gospel yeah. singer renowned, world traveler. He, he puts on a great gospel show. Right. He right. really does. And, and you were shocked when I told you that was my nephew. Yes, I, I, you know, all this time. I, <laughs> Forty some years I've, I've been knowing you. <laughs> you didn't know Malcolm was my nephew. <laughs> no, no, because my sister Judy's son. <laughs> yeah, she attends First Corinthians. Right, church religiously. North, North yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Is that about, right, right. Yeah. She keeps right. us informed with uh, uh, with Malcolm. You know, yeah, he's my guy. Malcolm surprised the wife. She she said, "Don't tell your wife. He's going to call her." And it's, it's kind of hard for me to keep a secret, you yeah. know, but I kept it and he called her and she was just shocked. Yeah, I know First time was. we ever called her, yeah. yeah. Good guy. But she was she was sick and so he let her know that he, he loved her, he thought yeah, about her, you know. that's great. That's it. Oh, um, Malcolm is going to be on, uh, we're going to have a telephonic uh, radio interview. As a matter of fact, um, it's either Monday or Tuesday of, uh, of next week. Okay. You, you Monday, I think Monday, I sort of called him. If he cannot make it Monday, we'll do it Tuesday. We're flexible, but it'll be flexible with him because he travels all over the world, you yeah. know, and, and so true. forth, you know. But so, um, 
Can you tell me this though? He has a master's degree too, right? I think he has a master's degree in and a psychologist or something. Right, I, I, exactly. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember. They all got so. But many now you degrees. you are one that firmly believe that education is the key, right? Dr. You talk Brooks, about that all the time. If you don't know how to read and understand what you're reading, <clears throat> you're lost. Mm. In school, you can look over here on your buddy's notes. Okay. When they give you tests now, they got the walls up. You can't look nowhere. You got to <laughs> know what's put down on the paper. But I tell kids, read the news. My kids say, Dad, I'm so bored, I throw them a paper. Mm -hmm. That means if you tell me you're boring, you're a boring person yourself. Okay. That's what I see. So mm -hmm. read a newspaper. I don't know nothing in the paper. I bet you if you read it from front to back, you'll find something you like. Okay. And most of the time they do. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. my nieces like that told me, now that they, in school, they're all A's in reading. Because uh, I'm going to read it. I okay. love to read. Okay. I read anything wrote in English, but I <laughs> okay. can't read it. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Dr. Brooks. Well, I tell you what, this has been uh, <coughs> An enjoyable experience is always enjoyable, and at least I try to get you as often as I can. Yeah. Is uh, to be on the show to I tell Lake County that you are a person that they should know. Thank you. And uh, so we want to reemphasize this as, as often as possible. You That's know, right. I can say that. The radio, we did it a few weeks ago yeah. and so forth, so we're going to do it both the radio and TV. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Mr. Charles Robinson. He's a Vietnam veteran, and he's been uh, talking with us about his personal experiences and more about his uh, veterans care after military service, which included the PTSD care that he's been receiving on a weekly basis at the Captain John's A. Lovell. James. Federal. James. They're going to call you. Jan oh, but call up, but James, <laughs> James, thank you very much. You're on a Captain James A. Lovell Federal Health Care Center in North Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. <laughs>